native form. Um, this is what Carson and I released at, at CCC, is the, the, the rainbow tables for A51 in its native form. Um, there are various cryptanalytical attacks against A51 as well um, that allow you to, to, to compensate with, uh, with various time memory trade-offs um, for, for various characteristics. Given that it's a 54-bit cipher, you don't really need to worry about it. Um, and you can, uh, the, the rainbow tables that we released at CCC um, are for just straight A51. We're not doing any cryptanalysis of it. There's nothing special about it. It's just straight A51. A53 is, is the most secure of the GSM uh, ciphers. Um, there, there have been attacks disclosed against A53. Um, they're, they're not viable um, against 3G systems because they require too much known plain text. Uh, they're, 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 the attacks against A53 so far are related key attacks. Um, it, they just don't work with the 3G crypto scheme. The, the interesting thing about it, though, is that uh, A53 was based on another cipher uh, called MISTI. Uh, A53 is called Kasumi. And the attacks against Kasumi don't work against MISTI. So once again, they took a function and they weakened it for use in GSM. Uh, whether it was done deliberately or not, I don't know. But the, the end result is that there is a cryptanalytical result against Kasumi that does not apply to MISTI. So it's, it's a weakening of that, that ciphering function. So we've got a few attacks on the crypto side as well. We've got no client challenge. So we've only got uh, 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 one random nonce in there. So we're vulnerable to replay attacks. We've got a 54-bit session key, which is just too small in, in the modern day and age. SIM cards are vulnerable to man-in-the-middle attacks. We can negotiate null crypto. In fact, we're actively encouraged to negotiate null crypto by the fact that your network operator will disable the warning alerting you that you're on null crypto. Um, hash functions. Comp128 version 1 has been badly broken and is still being used. There's all kinds of secret hash functions in use. There's all kinds of secret ciphering functions in use. All of this that I've, I've talked about so far is against basic GSM. There's all kinds of extra ciphers used in GPRS and Edge and 3G that have, again, never been disclosed, never been crept analyzed. There's a lot of secrecy still remaining in GSM. Out of the functions that have been disclosed, A51 is pretty broken. A52 is horrifically broken. A53 is academically broken. So what are you left with? Um, you've got a, 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 the opportunity to, to replay these random nonces and, and crack the A52 key to, to, to break forward secrecy. There's a lot of cryptographic attacks against GSM. Um, seriously, is, is it this bad? Yes, it really is. Um, there is no, no security in GSM at all. It's, it's not secure. What have we not talked about here? Well, there's, if you think about it, I've just got a base station here, and I've, I've got my own network and, and my own kind of asterisk and voice over IP backhaul and, and all the rest of it. When you consider a legitimate cell network, um, there's, again, all kinds of infrastructure behind that cell tower. You've got the base station controller. You've got the master system controller. You've got the hardware location registry. All of these different components and, and many more they're all interconnected using a, a protocol known as SS7, Signaling System 7. Um, SS7 is actually just as broken as GSM. Um, it really is. It has some, some fabulously stupid flaws in it. So if you combine the two, and, and you combine kind of GSM hackery on the front end with SS7 hackery on the back end, you can have a lot of fun. Um, I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail. Um, I'm just going to pimp Nick and Don's talk. Um, this, is, this is their re research um, on SS7 and GSM. Highly recommend it. They're doing some great stuff. Um, if you're going to Boston Source, I, I recommend going to the talk. That's all from me. Questions? Yes. <laughs> Question down here? Yeah, how does LTE stand? How does LTE stand? Um, to be honest, all of the stuff that I've talked about here is just GSM. Um, 3G technologies, 
Um, 3G is, is a, a significant overhaul of the, the GSM architecture. Um, it does add client challenges. It does add network to handset authentication. Um, there's, there's all kinds of stuff changed. 3G is, is much better. Um, even 2.5 and 2.75G, so GPRS and Edge, are much better than basic GSM. Um, basic GSM is horrific, and, and the later protocols have, have tried to improve it somewhat with, with varying degrees of success. Yes? Uh, I'm using a pair of RFX 900s with a 52 megahertz uh, external clock. Yes? Uh, my favorite most secure, I would... Uh, I was asked to, to pick my, my favorite most secure uh, cellular protocol. Um, I've, I've actually had this conversation with several people. Um, I, I know a few folks who are like, oh, CDMA is great because you can't talk it. Um, the, the thing about CDMA is that it's, it's a very different modulation scheme that's very, very different, difficult to implement in software. Um, so it's, it's more secure by being more obscure. Exactly. So uh, my own personal preference would probably be for a 3G technology. Um, they are, but they're, they're the best that's out there at the moment. It is. It is very sad. Yes. Um, so, so the question was, is there anything to stop me from using two USRPs and, and proxying a, an entire call? Um, the, the only thing that stops us from doing that at the moment is that there does not currently exist an open source uh, software radio implementation of a mobile station. So. Yes, in theory, you, you can do that, um, but it would take a little bit of work to take the, take the modulation schemes out of OpenBTS and effectively implement an entire, uh, an entire new uh, protocol stack for the mobile station. OK, any more questions? Yes, one over here. Uh, no, GSM and CDMA use uh, use wildly different modulation schemes. Um, they're they're completely in, incompatible. Um, there's there's really very little overlap between the two. Um, you you would really need a phone with with two baseband chips. Uh, some Blackberries have uh, have both GSM and CDMA functionality. Um, I've I've not come across a software implementation that can switch between them. Yes, question. Uh, yes, it is. So, okay. So the question was, um, is it a, is it a, a function of my implementation that requires me to to send that text message and, and engage in that dialogue to register? Yes, it is. Um, this is actually the the software stack that was used at Burning Man, so it's designed to be accessible and and you know be relatively friendly to people. Um, it's entirely possible to to modify my setup. Um, just to modify the, the SMS queue manager such that the moment someone connects to the BTS, they automatically get added to asterisk and assigned a cellular number. Um, so you, you don't necessarily need that, that SMS uh, uh, conversation. Question in the back. Uh, does the replay work against A53? Uh, yes, the replay does work against A53. Um, if you can replay RAND and then crack the A52 session key, um, that session key will be the same uh, regardless of, of which A5 variant was negotiated. So as long as, the, the, as long as that random nonce is the same, you will always get the same session key for A5 1, 2, or 3, uh, which is the, the great fun of it, that, that you can use that A5 2 break to, to get into a much more secure algorithm. Yes? So, so the question was, do I, do I foresee some, some big public event that's going to force MNOs to, to wake up? Um, yes and no. Um, there, there's a lot of, uh, there's increasing interest in GSM security. Um, there's a lot of people starting to get into it. It's becoming a lot more accessible with, with stuff like USRP. 
Um, so there's a lot more people hacking on it. There's a lot more people looking at it. And I think just in general, the, the pressure from the InfoSec community and the bad PR that's been surrounding GSM recently will eventually force the MNOs to, to respond. In terms of whether or not they can, that's an entirely different issue. Um, as far as I'm aware, there is only one network operator that's deployed A53 on GSM so far. Um, A53 is normally a 3G algorithm. Um, P3 